Father, I thank you for what you've been doing and just that we have encountered your presence here. Oh, thank you, Lord, for for worship. And thank you for how you just abide in the praises of your people. So, Lord, whatever you've broken up and stirred up now, just keep it going so we align with your purposes, your heart. We make a demand now on the anointing you have set into Daphne, on the assignment and the words that she's been given, that it will season this atmosphere and change us to the glory of the Son, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Say, break the curse. Break the curse. And say, restore the glory. Restore the glory. You got to do both, right? Some of you are working on that. You've got things you found out. If you've been meeting with Kim or you're hearing us, right, you understand there's an issue of dealing with curses, but then you got to see the glory yes. restored. Yes. Yes. You know, it's not enough to throw something out. You got to bring him in, right? So we're going to keep moving on that. A um, couple quick things. Um, let's see. Oh, next week is first fruits for the new month. Okay, that'll be the 12th biblical month when Adar comes, joy increases. Okay, and so we'll put out a ping to that effect. And then in two weeks, you're going to hear Kim teach here. She's teaching, <clears throat> and she'll be teaching on performance issues of performance, people pleasing. That okay, so that's something. God had, had laid on her and then downloaded kind of the entire outline while she was on a walk one morning. So you're going to want to be here for that. Um, then a, a week from, so next Thursday is the First Fruits here. And then on that Saturday over at Gale's got Kathy in town. Kathy Walters sent out an email about that effect. So if you want to do that, She's follow crazy. that up. She's a crazy woman. She is an absolutely crazy woman, which makes it really fun. She's crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in the best, in the best way. Okay. And then uh, lastly, if you would, um, Jim and Helen aren't here tonight. I'll cut this part out of the, the replay in case they watch it. But there is a sign up, if you would, please. Those guys have sown into so many of us by their tenderness, their hearts. They have interceded for everybody. If you find a place on there, you know, you could even just pick something up and just drop it off. It doesn't have to be homemade, something simple, but it, it loosens the burden off Helen from trying to do that. So um, you could talk with Jean if you wanted more details, but I sent out an email and there's a link in it again, so you can. There's papers back on the round table. Papers on the round table. Okay, or you can talk to Jean. Yeah, okay. And Kim's Kitchen is really good. Kim's Kitchen, <laughs> not this Kim's Kitchen, although that is really good. We did that tonight. But I said, oh, this is good. <clears throat> Yeah, well, it actually was a combo thing because Kim yeah. beefed it up a little bit, literally. So, so anyway, good. okay. So we've had Daphne here before, but let me once again just tee up something with an example. Can you see where this is? Can you see National Airport in Washington, D.C., up in the upper right corner? Uh -huh. This is not far from where we lived for 15 years. And I worked for a Fortune 500 company for 11 years up there uh, named Pulte Homes, one of the largest two, three builders <laughs> in the United States. And at one point, we acquired this huge tract of land called Potomac Yards. Can you see how dark and black it is? It's because it was a railroad switching yard. And the reason it stood undeveloped for so many years is the land was thoroughly defiled. I mean, you know, you got, think of years and years of trains going over that and the oil and other gas stuff and stuff that was changed. And I don't think that the, the railroad ever sought to pollute it, okay? It just sort of happened as you're rolling trains back and forth for decades after decades after decades. In fact, we lived in a house that was built in the depression that the guy originally bought for $500 and he worked out in that yard wow. originally back in that time. But in order for Pulte to make this usable, they had to go in and do a tremendous amount of land reclamation, right? The pollution just, you had to deal with it. You had to go back and deal with what had cursed the land and polluted it in order to make it a blessing. You got it? 
but it was worth it because if you notice the strategic position, look how close it is to National Airport. Right up above it, that set of buildings you see as where the train just bends around, that's Crystal City, which is where Amazon's going to do one of their new headquarters and everything else. Pentagon is just a little bit farther up there. So incredibly well-placed strategic land, unusable for the longest time because it was polluted. But going in and cleaning it up and breaking off that, and what began to get built in there, this was just one quick thing. There are houses, there are parks, there are office buildings, there's shopping. I mean, the whole restoration of that area is amazing, but it took time, it took energy, it took focus, it took checking. So you had to have people. And the reason I bring this up is because we all get that from a natural standpoint. And yet often we won't deal with the pollution that happens on the land from other activities spiritually. Right, so Daphne's going to come up and talk about this, and we've we've hit it with you before. But biblically, there are five main things you can look at that God that releases a curse against the land. Okay, and most of you know these, but just for somebody who doesn't, they're going, "What are you talking about?" So these are the five: innocent bloodshed, idolatry, sexual immorality, God robbing, and broken covenants. Those five in Scripture bring a curse against the land. And a lot of times, last one time in October when Daphne was here, we looked briefly at the situation where there was a famine in the land, right? And David inquired of the Lord, and he said it's because a covenant that Saul violated. So he had to deal with that in order to break the curse that was against the land. And when he did, the famine was lifted, okay? So again, we just go back to Scripture. We go to Scripture, we go to Scripture. So there's a process for doing all of that, and we, Daphne may talk about some of it, but I just want to tee this up specifically around the area of broken covenants, right? And you all, some of you rent, some of you own, but there's a redemptive process you can do with identificational repentance. Even though you weren't the one who broke the covenant, you can stand, ask God for the authority. You find the people who were harmed in that in the past. You repent. You ask for their forgiveness. And then if you go to Daniel, if you go to Nehemiah, you will see great examples of them saying, oh Lord. Nehemiah is just one of the first examples there. Lord, we've all seen my fathers. And he just does identificational repentance about what's going on because of what's going on in Jerusalem. And in the next chapter then, he's before the king. And the king goes, okay, what's up? The curse is reversed and begins to move in that way. So, yeah, you okay with that? This is a very brief introduction. So with that, we're going to welcome back Daphne. Do you remember Daphne from October? Yes. Don't you forget me. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate you guys so much because this teaching I've never done before, and I've needed to do it to prepare what we're getting ready to do. Some of you, if you remember, we're working on a Georgia resolution of apology mm. to Native Americans. And the content in that, in that reconciliation is what we're working on. And so for me to um, present some of these issues of roots that happened during the Trail of Tears and the curse that came from that, able to put it together so that when we sit down to write the resolution, I will already have been priming the pump. I'm so glad Kim, that you started out the way that you did, um, talking about uh, fracturing and healing and everything. I want you to shift tonight toward understanding the same thing applies to a heart of a government. A government, it may be a nation, city, township, whatever, it has a heart. And it's accountable to God whether they know it or not. Georgia, the state of Georgia is fractured. Look at the elections. Georgia needs healing. I love this list that you did, um, Stephen. Disorder. This could be this could be Georgia, a description of Georgia. Did you did you teach on this the last week or something? Uh, about 
disorder and the chaos? Yeah. yeah. Disorder, chaos. Now what we're working on is repentance, forgiveness, reset, realign, and restored new order. That's what needs to happen in the state of Georgia, and it will happen. And it will happen. As I said the last, the last time that I was here, when we finished that, that resolution of apology ceremony, the Lord met with us in a mighty way. And I walked into the, the lobby and the Lord said, I've got Georgia on my mind. <laughs> I knew that he was hovering around about lawmakers over a subject that still has not been dealt with at all and that is the removal of Native Americans in the state of Georgia. Your take on chaos. I'm going to be talking about Spring Place, a little place there that is very interesting, and we'll go into that in just a minute. Um, but I looked up Spring Place, which, at, by the way, is outside of Chatsworth. And um, the only thing that they had about Spring Place was a description of it, and it said, there were disputed elections, street brawls, murder, and lawlessness. <laughs> In, in Spring Place, because Spring Place was a center of the removal, and which caused that disorder. So if, if and I know you may not have sat under someone to, to teach this angle about government, but this is, this is about government. And the same principles that apply to healing in, in your heart individually is the same with government. There's no difference whatsoever. And we must have that in your state. And it will happen. I want to give you a little testimony first. I have a contemporary Christian music background. And how I got from that to here, only the Spirit of God knows because... <laughs> I thought the Lord really had a real sense of humor calling for somebody like me and some because this is this can be heavy stuff, you know, uh, very, very heavy stuff. I remember um, just an example of something before I go on because this is a good good way of looking at this. I was watching television um, at at a news uh, newscast. and um, the reporter, what was happening was the African Americans were, uh, walking down the streets and they were burning buildings and uh, doing all kinds of things. Um, and the newscaster said this. It blew me away of his insight. He said, what you're seeing is the result of wounded history. We have wounded history in our hearts too in our lives. Because there has been no closure to wounded history. There has been no closure in the state of Georgia for one of, uh, in one of the most, most horrible, disastrous things that's ever happened to our, our uh, nation, that is the removal of our Native Americans. And there has been results because of that. I... Um, the first thing that happened to me of getting me into this, every January I would go away with the Lord and ask Him what He wanted me to do. And this particular time I prayed and I said, Lord, um, it was an anointing really that came upon me. I want to know what you're, what you're crying out for. What, what is it that you, that you are concerned about and put me in the middle of that. You better really, really mean that. Because you are in for an adventure. Put me in the middle of that. You're going to have to say no to some things, I guess. It'll change your life, and it did mine. 
But this particular time in January, when I was praying that somebody, this green book changed my life. Now, the Bible was there too when I went away with the Lord. <laughs> they said, Daphne, the Lord spoke to me that I'm supposed to give you this book, Murray County Heritage. And Murray County Heritage is the county seat. Uh, Spring Place is the county seat of Murray County. Are, is anybody familiar with Spring Place or Chatsworth? Where is that? I have no idea. Chatsworth, near Dalton, Georgia. Okay. Dalton, Chatsworth, Spring Place. Yeah. It used to be, yeah, it used to be Spring, Chat, it was not, Spring Place used to be the county seat. Now, I looked up uh, Spring Place, as I said, and it's not incorporated. <laughs> it's just nothing left, and we'll talk about that. I asked the Lord, why do I need to read this book, Murray County Heritage? And I was praying, Lord, what, is it, what are you crying out for? And I began to read the removal, about the removal of, of the Native Americans, the Trail of Tears, and which was unusual, the fact that I didn't know a lot about it. I'm from Chattanooga, hello, that's the gateway to the trail. But you know, sometimes I think we remove the Indians so excellently that we remove them out of our consciousness, yeah. really. I started reading this and the Lord spoke to me and he said, there needs to be healing between the red man and the white man. And I want you to go to Spring Place. Well... It was amazing that I had just moved from Oklahoma and Texas back to, I thought Chatt it was going to be in Chattanooga, but the Lord, when he, Lord, when he sent me back home, I had been gone for about 20-something years from Chattanooga, and he said, I'm, I'm sending you back to the land of your ancestors, and I thought it was Chattanooga, but it wasn't. I ended up in Murray County in Spring Place, the land of my ancestors, and I thought, that's horrible. It was just nothing there. What am I doing here? You know, so as I began to read that, he instructed me of what I needed to do. I had never heard of it before. I'm sure it happened some other places. But it never happened around any, anywhere where I was around. He said, I want you to put together a little gathering at Spring Place. I didn't know about Spring Place. I didn't know about the Moravians and, the, and their prayer life because they came, and we'll talk about the Moravians, but um, I, he said, go down to the spring, and that's where the Moravians prayed. And I want you to bring a Cherokee, and bring a Cherokee, and, and, and bring the church people, and have a reconciliation meeting. And that was it. That's all he said. Have a reconciliation meeting. Well, I could hardly even spell reconciliation, much less have reconciliation meeting. And so I stepped into it because I said, Lord, put me in the middle of what is on your heart and your cry. And so I began to contact people. Well, pastors wouldn't have anything to do with me. They said, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. I said, well, I thought so too. But the Lord said, brother. <laughs> And so I said, you know what? I said, the way we would make up with one another, we'd say we're sorry. I guess it's the same way with people group to people group. I said, there is uh, some bad history here. And I said, and by the way, I when I came into Murray County, I asked the Lord, what's wrong with Murray County? I felt it. I felt the darkness in Murray County. But I did not understand the principles of what we're talking about now. I began to gather some people, and the Lord said to me, do not advertise. I'll bring the people. This is of me. And so we're having prayer meetings, and I don't know about a reconciliation meeting, but it was a by faith, by faith, that we're going to apologize to Native Americans. But you know what? I started thinking I hadn't seen a Cherokee in years. And so it's a week before we're going to have this little gathering, and there's no Cherokee. And I said, Lord, you said a Cherokee reconciliation meeting. I said, well, we sort of need a Cherokee. <laughs> 
And so we begin to intercede in the, in the spirit for a Cherokee. We needed a Cherokee. Two days before this gathering, there was a phone call from an elder at Eastern Bend, Cherokee. And he says, are you Daphne Swilling? Yes, sir, I am. I'm an elder uh, with Eastern Bend, Cherokee, and I hear you need a Cherokee. Wow. And I'm thinking, wow. I thought to myself, who told you? <laughs> yes, sir, I need a Cherokee. Well, sister, I'm coming down then with my wife. He thought he was going to be doing a type of a, uh, a thing on drums, uh, a talk on drums and culture. Wow. But that was okay. <laughs> he was a Baptist minister as well. The very same day, I got a phone call from Oklahoma. He was a young, now this guy from, Ch from Cherokee was an old man. A young man from Oklahoma whose, whose ancestors went on the Trail of Tears called me. My name is Brian, what, whomever it was, I forgot. I hear you need a Cherokee. <laughs> and I'm, somebody gave me a, a plane ticket and I'm going to fly from Tahlequah, Oklahoma, which is the capital of Cherokee Nation. I'm going to fly and I'm going to meet you. And, and what do you want me to do? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> but I said, you come? He says, well, I lead worship. I said, yes, you come. And I said, do you have some regalia? And uh, I think I said at that time, do you have a costume or something? <laughs> he says, do you mean regalia? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. And so, so anyway, we met there by the spring, at Spring Place. All I knew is the Moravians who came there to Spring Place, they were the first, they were the first to have reconciliation with Native Americans in the early 1800s. So I want us to go to the, the Van House we had, and I will say, the Lord met with us there. 200 people showed up at that meeting. It was a launching of something, and I thought, wow, I'm, this is wonderful, but now I'm going to move on to something else. Well, honey, this is 2019, and I'm still here. It has been an awesome, awesome thing. We're going to look at Spring Place. Has anybody ever heard of Van House? You know, in northern Georgia, well, well not just uh, northern Georgia, but the, sta the state of Georgia says that the Van House is the, is the most visited tourist attraction that Georgia has. James Van, he was a very great chief. And there's his son, Joseph Van. Now, these Indians in the early 1800s, before the Trail of Tears, they were very rich. God had prospered them. The Moravians were ministering to them, and the Moravians with, were, the, were counseling them and their mentors, giving them the word of God. They were ch being changed, ta being taught prayer and devotion to the Lord. James Van was the richest man in the United States at that time. The Indians in Georgia were very blessed. The, the uh, government of Georgia would have none of it. Not only that, gold was discovered on Cherokee land. And it, it came to be that uh, once gold was discovered on Cherokee land, then um, a Cherokee could be shot dead if they were caught digging their own gold out of the, out of the land. So Spring Place is very unusual in that, of course, yes, it was the home of the Van House and, and Chief James Van, but the, the U.S. government was directly connected with Spring Place because the U.S. government supported the Moravians to minister to the Cherokee. Andrew Jackson, James Monroe, 
came from Washington, D.C. to come see the Moravians. If you needed to go see the leaders of even the Cherokee, you had to go to Spring Place. The Georgia state government was directly connected with Spring Place. See, we're talking about strategic, we're talking about government, all in that little space of land. It was the home of the Moravians who represented the government of God. And so you've got all of those things that, uh, that is connected with Washington, D.C., Atlanta, the Cherokee, and, and Moravians, the church. The Moravians, we'll go to the Moravians there, but the Moravians, I want you to know about the Moravians. They were for, from Germany. They were a people and the only people that ever came to the United States for the only purpose was to minister to Native Americans. The only ones. They are known for their hundred year nonstop prayer meeting That, that revival historians point to to say because of that 100 uh, year prayer meeting we got our second great awakening they were prayer people they would sell themselves into slavery on the mission field just to be able to go and, and preach the gospel and die and be buried there in that land they were spiritual forerunners and they were spiritual pioneers. They were ahead spiritually of any people in the, in the earth. And here they were in Georgia, in Georgia, praying and prayers and the seeds of prayer. 30 years they were there at Spring Place ministering and praying. They are known, which of course this is pretty normal to us, They had passion for music. They moved in the spirit with music. They had discipleship and training. Focus and focus on unity around Jesus. Now this, these were things that were going on in Spring Place. And they impacted the whole community. 24-7 prayer on the watches, the prayer watches, experiencing God and knowing Jesus intimately, intimately. So let me see what we need to go to next. After that first encounter with that green book, which happened in January 1998, this month in January, I'm sitting in my office, and again, I'm praying, Lord, what, what's going to be about this year? I know it was going to be about the resolution. And I looked over, and there's that green book staring me right in the face. Mm -hmm. After 19, I hadn't even looked at it since 1998, and it's January. And it's like, pick up and read it. When I began to read that book, it talked about, and I, w I made notes in 1998, and those notes spoke to me, that what happened in Spring Place that defiled it, what happened with the Georgia government came in to do certain things. And so I want us to talk about those things because those things are going to go into our resolution. And it's about roots. Right before the removal, Georgia legislature passed a bill called Georgia Jurisdiction over the Cherokee Nation. And 
part of that was to say to all white men living in Cherokee Nation, if you do not agree with our immigration policy of removal, then you need to get out of Cherokee Nation. Because the whites, especially the Moravians, were encouraging the Indians to fight and don't go. Fight and we'll believe that you're going to be able to keep your land and stay. And so it came about, many of the white men left, but the, Mar the Moravians would not leave. They said, no, we are not going to leave. Because they did not, and they would not support, of course, they would not support a policy like that. December 24th, 18, 1819, I believe, the Georgia Guard came to the Moravians and told them they must leave now. Reverend Clowder, who was sitting on the porch, he cries out, this is illegal what you're doing. He said, do not remove the landmarks. There are the landmarks of our property. This property belongs to the Lord God. This is not just any land and any property. You cannot remove the landmarks. That's the first root. Deuteronomy 27, 17. Cursed be he who removes his neighbor's landmark. It's just about as plain as you can get. <laughs> Hosea 5.10 The princes of Judah, or the princes, the leaders of Judah, are like those who remove the landmark. The Lord says, I will pour out my wrath like water. And why is that? Acts 17.26 gives us some insight. And part of this, the, the main part of this verse is that he sets their boundaries it's the Lord who has the right to set boundaries and habitations for all nations. It's an amazing scripture because he has chosen where peoples are going to be living and when they will leave or when they will stay. But there's a scripture says, that says, what the Father has not planted will be rooted up. That is good. So the root of moving a landmark brings curse. But again, I want to keep saying after we do these roots that we will say what the Father, Matthew 15, 13, what the Father has not planted will be rooted up. And that's what we're believing for. It was going to be rooted up because these things are defiling your state. Clowder, Reverend Clowder has taken off the Spring Place Mission property. Now listen to this. Within days of the last Mor uh, Moravian that has kicked off the land, within days of their departure, the once sacred ground would become a hotbed of vice and every manner of wickedness under the name of Camp Benton. It became a military headquarters. They're getting ready to gather up the Cherokees and put them in stockades. There are stories it is as if the Holy Spirit left with the Moravians. Stories of the spirit of murder is, is released in Spring Place. What, again, sacred ground The red man against the white man. The red man stories, and, I, and there, I'm reading these stories by Moravians that wrote it in letters because they are observing what is happening. 
when the Indians are burning the white man's houses and keeping them in the houses and they're burning them alive. And there's instances when the children would run out of the houses and the Indians would go and take those children and throw them back in the fire. White man against white man. People who would w walk into a, a, a house with an axe and chop them to death. All hell broke out. Every vice and every manner of wickedness under the name of Camp Benton. That's a root. Violence. Hosea 4, 1 through 3. Listen to this. The Lord has a controversy. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Spring Place. For the Lord has a controversy, a pleading contention with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no faithfulness, there is no love, there is no pity and mercy or knowledge of God from personal experience with Him on the land. And there is nothing but swearing and breaking faith and killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break out into violence, one deed of bloodshed following close on another. Therefore shall the land continually mourn, and all who dwell in it shall languish together. That is a root. But we say what the Father has not planted, will be rooted up. Of violence. I want to prophetically say that when we deal with these, just to talk about these roots. They're going to be rooted up. So Joseph Van, who you saw, wants to take legal action against the Georgia legislature because they have they have taken his land. But what happened was the Georgia legislature changes the law in order to steal the land. The injunction that they brought that Joseph Van brought to the legislature, you know, is that he's suing for his land. And so they said, sorry, but that, that has no basis anymore because the laws have changed. That's a root. And that's a big one. Yes. Psalm 94, 20 through 21. Shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you? They gather together against the life and the righteous and condemn innocent blood. Wow. This has happened over and over and over again. And I am, you know what? I'm sure it has happened, happened over and over again in the government today. I know it has in Washington, D.C., Changing the law in order to cover evil devices and agendas. The first elections. The attempt to establish state government on former Indian land. A historian writes that Murray Countyans were at their rowdiest at the first election. He wrote that they excited bitter feelings, fraud was charged, and street fights were common. Assault, riot, riot, and murder, opposing forces sometimes would fight battles with sticks and stones. What was happening was laws for elections were changed. They were manipulated. Reverend Clowder writes in 1837, book 52, and I'll just give you just a little insight to what, what he wrote in this letter. 
If you were of the opposing party, because there were thugs that were in charge at Spring Place, you better not let it be known what, how you were going to elect because you would be murdered. As they're standing and voting in the elections, there are gunmen in houses looking to see which ones they think are going to be voting wrong, and they are assassinating them. In one election, there was, there was 20, 23 murdered in the election. To see, when you have bloodshed, that goes to a deeper issue over elections. And believe me, I thought about the bitterness, these kinds of things that we saw in Atlanta this past elections. See, you know, roots, they have harvests. That's why we can't deal with symptoms anymore. We have to be, be able to help, let, let the Lord show us and navigate how, how we're going to get rid of these, these roots. We have seen these things over and over again in all of these areas through the years. The throne of iniquity that they're talking about is undergirded by Leviathan. And I don't know if you know of Leviathan. It is a principality. They work together. And they oppose kingdom authority through the misuse of law or lawlessness. But you know what? What the Father has not planted will be rooted, even a principality. Amen. The government of Georgia has rejected kingdom government by kicking the Moravians out. Who they represented and what they represented for lust of land. And greed, which is really worship of land, which is idolatry. Now this is a pretty grim piece of history and, and of these roots that are still defiling today. But it's just a matter of time and we'll see these things dealt with. What has encouraged me the most is that what we are seeing because of all of these things that took place by the Georgia legislature my work in the Georgia legislature, I am seeing a shift in the hearts of the Georgia legislature toward Indians. First of all, toward Indians. John Meadows. What these men are doing, and out John Meadows, and we'll talk about David Ralston later, is that they're coming in an opposite spirit with a heart to say, we have done wrong because the kingdom is coming upon their hearts. John Meadows here is, when I left Tennessee to come and work about this resolution three years ago, I approached John Meadows for the very first time. I approached him because his jurisdiction was Spring Place. And he knew all the history that took place in Spring Place. I had a draft of a resolution and I sat down and I said, is this passable? Is this something that we can do? And he read it and he says, Daphne, he says, I can tell you right off that I'm for it. I'm for that. I can say that, but I can't do it because of my position in the legislature. He was the chairman of the Rules Committee. And that is a very powerful, powerful office. He, his, the, the Rules Committee determines what goes on the floor to be voted on and what doesn't go on the floor to be voted on. And so he says, but I will help you any way that I can. Well, just this last December, 
I went to see David Ralston, and we'll we'll have that. Oh, what what is going on here? Is we were able to pass a resolution that was not an apology, but it was called a new Echota apology. It was the very first resolution, a Native American apology that ever took place ever. See, we went to the archive because we knew they weren't re they weren't ready for an apology. We went to the archive. There was no legislation whatsoever about Native Americans in any way, shape, or form. And so we wrote a resolution to honor the Cherokees and what they accomplished in the state of Georgia. And we opened up the subject for the Trail of Tears, tears for the very, very first time. Now what was amazing about this there's four principal chiefs there at New Echota, which is the capital. It was the capital of the Cherokee Nation, right outside of Calhoun, Georgia. I've never seen two, two principal chiefs together in, in one place. There's four. Cherokee Nation has three principal chiefs, and then this one is the principal chief of the Creek Nation. And in the state of Georgia, we have Creeks and Cherokee. We have three state-recognized tribes in Georgia. They received it graciously. There is quite a gulf between Native Americans, you can imagine, and the Georgia legislature of some of the roots that we were, have been talking about and what they have done to them. I was so surprised when that resolution, when I heard that it passed. Wow, it passed. There was only two or three led, uh, representatives that didn't vote for it. They're shifting. And it's going to bring healing. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a miracle. It is. It's a miracle. The Holy Ghost is doing it. He's waking up legislators. He's waking them up and speaking to them. They're dreaming of Teepees and yeah. Indians. Yes. <laughs> and how it is working out now these days is that I seem to be the answer to their prayers because they don't know what to do with what they <laughs> have been dreaming about. Well, I know what they're going to do. Yeah. I know what they're yes. going to do. So good. <laughs> yes. The amazing thing is that when that resolution was passed, I saw John Meadows' name on that resolution. He told me for all these years, I can't be, I cannot sponsor it. I know it was on his heart. But what I didn't know was he was dying. And so when this resolution came up, he went to the Speaker of the House, David Ralston. I didn't know they were best friends. He asked permission from the David Ralston, can I put my name on this resolution? Wow. And he said, you better believe you can. Whoa. Yes, you better believe you can. So when I s sat down with David Ralston before Christmas, and it is nothing but a miracle that little me can walk into the Speaker of the House office and be received. That was, that's the Lord. And all glory goes to Him for opening the doors for that. God has given me favor with these men. We talked about John Meadows. He was sad. And I, t I said to David Rawson, I said, I was so amazed that, that, that John's name was, was on the resolution. He says, well, Daphne, yes, he came to me and he asked permission. And he said, you know, I just didn't know that he, it meant so much to him. And he was touched. And I took these pictures to David Rawson just right after this. I'd shown him all these pictures of John Meadows. 
of what you have seen speaking and reading that resolution. When John Meadows stood before those principal chiefs in the Cherokee Nation, it was called homecoming, Cherokee homecoming. And they had come back for the very first time since the Trail of Tears, back to the Capitol. Wow. Woo. Whoa. Yeah. And, J and John was there to, to, to uh, read a resolution to them. Isn't that amazing? Yes. The timing of that. The timing of that was just absolutely amazing. But he said, I know it means so much to him. And I said, well, here's, here's these pictures. Look. Look at him. He's, he's speaking and he's happy. And he's, he teared up. I said, it's his legacy. Mr. Speaker, it's his legacy. That was the last piece of, of legislation he ever did on the last day of the session. That was his last one. Wow. That was on his heart. And because of that, David Ralston, who had never said this to me before, because we have discussed about this resolution of apology, several times, he said to me, Daphne, I need for you to pray for me and I need for you to tell everyone that you are talking to to pray for me because I have some challenges in this session over these elections. And he said, I know we'll work it out It'll, it'll, it'll work out. I just need wisdom, and I need to know how, how to deal with this. He said, um, there are representatives that, has, that are suing the, uh, the, the Georgia government. There are senators that are suing the government over the elections. But he says, this is what I wanted to tell you, though. He said, when this settles down, I will do something about that resolution. It will happen. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And I said, and it will be John Meadows' legacy too. Mm -hmm. What had happened, he was touched in his heart with his friend. And he just shifted. This man is the second in power in the Georgia legislature. I know he'll do it. And then we'll have a ceremony. And they'll le read that resolution to the Native Americans who will be coming not, not only from Oklahoma, from all over the United States. Because that governmental anointing that Georgia has, it's also on Indians. What happens to Native Americans in, in, in Indians affects all Indians in the whole nation. Isn't that amazing? So, I wanted to tell you that because for David Ralston, this resolution must pass, and it will pass, and it must be a joint resolution. It must be the Senate and the House to agree to this resolution. Now there has a mo the movement has begun in state houses since we did our Tennessee resolution. Virginia, Utah, Colorado, and Pennsylvania have done a resolution. Just recently, Alaska and South Dakota. I believe this that when Georgia when Georgia passes that resolution, it will cause all state governments to follow suit. There will be healing. These roots that we've been talking about. Repentance. Forgiveness. Because the Native Americans, they must forgive. They must forgive. And listen, let me tell you something. The great destiny that the state of Georgia has 
The only way that this great destiny is going to happen is that the Native Americans need to be right beside you because they hold keys. They hold keys to the land. All of a sudden we'll start seeing them hand in hand walking with us. And in so doing, these roots, they're going to disappear. And God's going to bless the great state of Georgia. Now something about Moravians that I want to leave you with, something that I'll, about the Moravians and their prayer, prayer anointing. Everywhere I'm going now, people are coming up to me and saying, the Lord spoke to me and said, we need to relight the Moravian lampstand, a prayer. And really, I'm, I don't really even know, Stephen, what that really means of, of, of a Moravian lampstand. But people are talking about it, and I think it is by, I think it's of the Lord. And I believe, you see, the Moravians are the branch of his planting. I've got to read you uh, this scripture here that I believe in the spring place of the Moravians. That the people shall be righteous and they shall possess the land forever. They are the branch of my planting the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. The Moravians so did that. They were a branch. They planted something in Spring Place. And you know what? They're in the great cloud of witnesses. They are praying in the great cloud of witnesses. That's what they do. They pray. Their, their ministry was cut off in Georgia. But Hebrews talks about that those who did not receive the promise. But God had us in mind to complete the work of prayer over Georgia. And so, all of a sudden somebody hands me this out of the middle of no, the mantle of the Moravians. The mantle of the Moravians. And it talks about the mantle. It talks about what they have accomplished, that kind of thing, and that it's not finished. And really, it's kingdom. They, and, and the Holy Spirit worked through them. But they have, there is a planting in Spring Place. It's kingdom. And Stephen, I didn't t talk to you about this, but I made a copy of this. And I don't know if you have a, maybe you do have a copy machine. Um, but it would just be great if you can make a copy for everybody. Call it Mantle of the Moravians. Something is happening, something is coming up. And as, as a matter of fact, from Cherokee Nation, Somebody sent me this newspaper article from Cherokee Nation. All of this is happening one thing after another. It's got my attention. 200-year-old bond between Cherokees and Moravians wow. endures. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. They had covenant one another with one another. And we say those 371 treaties that were broken by the government, the Moravians made one, one covenant, one treaty, and it was not broken. The Cherokees would look at the Moravians and say, you're not a white man, you're one of us. They weren't there for their, their land. They were there for their hearts. But isn't that amazing after two? And this man right here, he was in our s ceremony in uh, Tennessee representing Cherokee Nation. 
He will be the new principal chief of the Cherokee Nation probably next year, and he's my friend. Wow. It's something about this. It's just something about this that I just wanted to share with you. And, you know, it seems so discombobulated a little bit because I've never put this together before, and it's, you know, knowing what to say and what not to say. But anyway, anyway, we are going to be writing a resolution. And we need to be covered in prayer. And we need to be praying for David Ralston. We need this resolution. We do not know if it's going to be after this session. It's going to be the right time because we cannot release a resolution like this in an atmosphere of hostility. And let me say this. When the First Peoples have their resolution, there's going to be a resolution for our African American sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. We do the first one first for the First Peoples. The old saying is if you, if you button the first button right, it's right all the way down. Right? So, Stephen, I don't really know how to end this, but. Yes. Funny you were talking about the Moravians because um, Scotty, who's usually here, who's our intercessor, I don't remember when this was, but um, she and I have been going back and forth. Um, I think it was probably eight or ten years ago. She was in Savannah <laughs> at the uh, memorial of the Moravian colonists. This is where they had a, um, a mission um, where the uh, Moravians came in to the state of Georgia. This was in the 1700s, and they used to have a school there and a mission and all that. And there's not much left, I guess, except a water pump. And all this land had been prayed over so much so everyone goes there and gets water, okay? She brought water back with her, and she brought, and we had a women's group here, and she brought this water to this land, and she said, we've got to pray this. We, for some reason, I don't even know why, but we've got to take this water and pour it in your land out here by your Ooh, front door. Whoa. Yeah. So we did that. We went outside wow. and poured it in the land at the front door. Wow. Well, and I looked over there, and I thought, I bet you have that water from the Moravians, don't you? <laughs> See, this is by the Spirit. Yes. yes. yes wow. The Moravians prayed by the spring. I really would at some point in time, and maybe, I don't know if I'm asking too much, but I'm going to ask anyway. Yeah. For us to meet at Spring Place sometime and go to the spring and pray. I went there today, Stephen, before I came here. I was going down the interstate, and I always, when I'm troubled about things, I go to the Spring Place mission there, the, uh, the old site. And the, and the spring where they prayed. And I, I, I pray and I pray. And I really believe with all my heart I have received a, a mantle. Yeah. I really do. There's something there. It's a well. It's a spiritual well. Now it needs to be cleaned out spiritually. But it's going to flow again. Yes. It is God's plant that is going to bring life and not curse. You see a shift, the planting of the Lord, and not the roots that he has not planted. So I knew, I said, do I have time? I mean, I've got five hours to get down here, you know, so I just, I said, I'm going to do it. They'll just have to wait for me. <laughs> I went down and, and, and knelt down to that, at that spring, and I got this and I said, I don't know what we're going to do with this, but something's going to come up, and we're going to know what to do with it. But I wanted to present it to you of what you, we need to do with it. That I don't know. See, I don't know. 
And, and I wanted to say this too, that when we're talking about roots, I'm not coming with a big strategy of knowing exactly how to deal with that. A lot of times, when we're shown something that doesn't necessarily mean we need to do something about it yet, we have to know strategy. Because I tell you what, the Lord's on it in this state. The Lord's already on it on those roots. Amen. And He's got a way of doing this thing. And I really believe the resolution will have a lot to do with the healing of that. I know that it will. I know that it will. It happened in our state. It changed our state. I can say that for a fact. It's wonderful to come down to Georgia. They can't, legislature couldn't tell me, well, that can't be done. I had to have a victory under my belt before I came to Georgia. Georgia has a reputation of being against Native Americans, and I really believe that there is just some filter or something left over from Spring Place that needs to be dealt with, and it will be, that just sort of hangs around of ill feeling to Native Americans. So, here it is. I planted roses out there, they all grew. The ones on the right side didn't grow so well. So we might need to pour on the right side. And you saw that water sitting there. You saw that water over here? Yep. When you were talking about the Moravians, I thought, I wonder if that's Moravian water like what's it is. in the front yard. That's crazy. It is. Wow. Crazy good. And that was like eight or ten years ago. Wow. That's so There's a stirring in Spring Place. There's a stirring in Georgia. Yes. There's a stirring. So is that from Spring Place or Savannah? No, Spring Place. She got it on the way down. So everyone's connecting the dots, right? Some folks that are watching online may not have all the dots connected because we talk about this at different places in time. But it goes back to what I showed you right at the beginning, Potomac Yard. What goes down on the land can defile the land and blocks it from being used for any other use. Okay? You can make land so toxic, just one gallon of gasoline, you can make it a whole acre or more really toxic. So you have to understand in the spirit, when you walk into one of the violation of those, shedding innocent blood, idolatry, immorality, God robbing, broken covenants, okay? All that stuff defiles. So there's a need, particularly when it's strategically located, to get that cleaned up. So this is really critical because it connects then with the rest of us. If you don't believe that, then I just want you to go to scripture, look at where David, who was the administrative head <laughs> of God's government in the earth at that point in time, was running against a famine for three years. Finally inquired, why are we that slow sometimes in figuring out that there's some other reason? And when he got the word from the Lord, then he had to deal with that to break that curse and to bring the blessing and the glory back. So Father, we receive this now from Spring Hill that you will give us direction. Lord, you've already brought Moravian <coughs> spring water on this from where it started and then where it got shut down and broken. So, Lord, we want to bring those two sources together that they will be encouragement and life out of this place. You have set this land aside, mm -hmm. broken open a well from this place that would go every direction in order to encourage and revive the people and the land. So, Father, we receive this now as a gift from your prophet who's walking this through. Lord, that it will permeate the ground yes. and be a sign and a symbol of the restoration you want to bring to Spring Hill, yes. to the Cherokee Nation, yes. to the state of Georgia, yes. to every person who lives here, yes. and Father, then out into the nation. Lord, we don't understand it all. We don't have to. We just need to be obedient. Yes. Father, we ask your blessing on Daphne. Continue to open the doors for her. We pray for her physical protection and strength. We ask for continued favor and increase in favor. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And Father, for the contention that's going on in the legislature now, 
for the division, Lord, that let us come together around the things that yes, unite. Yes, Lord. Lord, let us have a heart together that's broken about the broken covenants. That we can say we're sorry. We're sorry. Lord, restore us. Restore the state. Restore the Cherokee Nation again. And restore this country to the glory that you set it apart for. In the name of Jesus. Kim, would you pray for David Ralston? Lord Jesus, I know nothing about this man. Except what's little I've heard in the news and what Daphne has said tonight. But you know his heart, you know his mind. You know the places he's broken. You know where he needs you and your spirit. And Lord, we pray for absolute and genuine salvation and the gift of your Holy yes, Spirit for him. We ask that you would move on him, Lord. <coughs> move on him deeply, Lord, in all ways. We thank you, Lord, that you have shifted his heart and mind toward the Native American people. Mm. We, Lord, we ask that you would shift his heart and mind towards all your people yes. and towards your land in every way, Lord, that you want it shifted. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that he is your man in legislature in this hour. We wait, Lord, with expectation for all the ways that you're going to use him Put yes. him on our hearts, Lord. Yes. Show him to us in unusual ways. Help us to all get to know him and get to know his face, along with Daphne's Lord, in ways that we will be reminded on a regular basis to pray for each of them. Help us to call this resolution up in this Lord. hour, Lord, and onto that floor Lord. so that it will be passed, Lord Jesus. And it will say absolutely everything that you want it to say. Yes. Yes. We praise you and we thank you for all that you're doing here, Lord, in this man and in his heart. We thank you, Lord. Praise you. Amen. In your precious name. Amen. I just want to say, too, you know, I'm always around dealing with these roots, have been for over 20 years. They're, they're hideous. They're horrible. It goes on and on and on and on and on of roots. But I am so encouraged because I see a shift. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I see, Amen. I feel a shift. Yes. I feel a shift. Hey, this state means something to God. Yes. And I know all states mean something to God. But you know what? There's a fight over Georgia. Yes. Satan wants Georgia. God wants Georgia. Guess what? Yes. God's going to get it. Yes. God's going to get Georgia. Yes, There's a reason... That there is a, there is a, a, what is it? Conflict. It's, it's two separate altars. Yes. Two separate altars. Yes. There's something here that means a lot, and it means a lot to the nation. But it's just that Georgia can't do it without the First Nations with it. Yes. And our African American, all three in covenant. Amen. together, walking together Amen. to get it done because Georgia's known for a lot of stuff mm. I'm not going to go into it but you know what, it's going to change it's going to change it will change it will change covenant love released on this step that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs>